Hello everybody, how's it going? Um, welcome, my name is Jacob. This is my room in London. It's so lovely to see you. Uh, we are here today to uh, discuss, uh, analyse, thrill over, explore, uh, dive into the depths of this song called With the Love of My Heart, which is really uh, exciting for me. Um, and so I think we should pretty much just get straight into it. Uh, but before I do, I just want to say how uh, how utterly blown away I, I've been th from all of your lovely kind of comments and um, and and feedback from this song because this song is is a crazy sort of tintinabulation adventure and uh, it's it's cool to see you guys kind of responding to those feelings. It's wonderful and all of the little Instagram clips, it's just making my heart sing. It's lovely. Anyhow, so this song is uh, essentially it's split into five different sections. Uh, there's the A section, which is kind of like the the orchestra glow. That's what I call it. The second section is is like the funky verse sections. There's one verse and there's the second verse as well. And then the, the C section, the third section is like kind of like a dance floor vibe. Fourth section is beast smash funk. And the fifth section is keep emotion. And all of this stuff uh, kind of happens in a, in a variety of, of, of zones. Uh, I guess the, the structure, the official structure is A, B, A, B, A, C, D, A, E. I was just having a shower and I was thinking like, man, I've got to write another one of those A, B, A, B, A, C, D, A, E songs. Like, again, I keep falling into that same trap. Anyway, one day I'll change. So let's let's jump straight in. Let me see if this is going to work. Okay, so I can get rid of my stream window. This is Logic, uh, and um, I'm sure by this point you're fairly acquainted with, with my kind of Logic setup. Um, so this is like a beast of a session. Uh, if I keep scrolling, you'll see how many tracks I have present. This is like what my brains look like over the last year. I've, obviously there are, there are 39 other sessions just like this because there are 40 songs on Jesse, which is this crazy album. This one uh, clocks up to 358. But what I've realized actually in, in preparing for this stream is that there are two other Logic sessions that have contributed to this one, uh, which combined contain 360 tracks as well. So there's actually like 720 tracks in the session, which is just ridiculous. It's just crazy. Um, but luckily, my, my computer has 128 gigs of RAM. Thank you to Ben Bloomberg. Uh, so that's super cool. And I can essentially play the session. Let me see if this is going to work if I just play the session. See, system overload That's what I'm talking about. And again. So this has become the story of my life recently. Uh, OK, let me see if I can play you a few of the tracks. That's what I like it. So let's talk about the sort of like uh, majesty of this particular session before I jump into the other session. So this is like where everything comes together. This is all of the sessions combined, all good vibes. There's a whole different se a session for orchestra, which I'll bring up in just one second. Uh, and uh, there's another session for the, the hip groove, which is like the, the, the beast smash funk. It's called the hip groove, not because I think it's necessarily hip, just because that was the running name of, of the logic session. So uh, so as, as we go through, I'll kind of explain what's going on, uh, take some things apart and, uh, and I'll answer some questions. Um, so here goes. So this zone here. Your face isn't in the shot. Oh, face isn't in the shot. Yes, just the face. So uh, everything else is. It gets up to the, the neck. Uh, it looks like the face is in the shot. I think it's okay. Well, let, let me check it out. Okay. Um, so let me let me go left to right and explain what's up here. That was my mum, by the way. She's fantastic. Um, okay. So here we have the orchestral glow. So we've got voices. And obviously each one of these tracks is an individual voice, which is quite nice. So you get kind of like wall of sound. Bah! It's very exciting. Uh, there are multiple buses of, of vocal tracks. This, these, this is a bus here. One note vox is one of the buses. Uh, in fact, I think there are, let me just see this, but I think there's like, yeah, there's actually 110 tracks just for, vo just for voices. So everything above this, this bus here uh, is a vocal track, and these kind of yellow circle vibes, th those are buses, um, which means that they're, they're folders in which other tracks can sit. And so you can put plugins um, on folders. And so these are all the plugins I have on this particular folder. There's a compressor, which looks like this. There's a space design, which looks like this. There's an imager, which looks like this. And then there's Neutron, uh, which looks like that. And these are all different plugins that do different things. Um, let me just hide all those windows for you for one second. So yeah, so you can actually put plugins on individual tracks and on folders, which is kind of crazy. Um, let's just go down so I can show you all the stuff that's going on here. Little gong, very old fashioned. 
And this is the orchestra. And as I open up the session, you'll see that uh, much of these, many of these tracks have different yellow lines, and yellow lines uh, are volume. So when you sort of zoom out and see what's up, there's like a ton of volume information, uh, because obviously you want to play these tracks musically. That's that's when logic becomes a bit like a sort of musical instrument, uh, when when things can be dynamic and you can you can breathe into them. So yellow lines equals volume, in case you didn't know. Um, and uh, so this is the orchestra. Uh, I exported the orchestra in one track because I couldn't fit 300 tracks on this section because there was a maximum number of 256 audio tracks in Logic. I continuously battle against Logic for this, but such is the way of things. Um, and so uh, one nice thing to mention here is that I have put um, I have put this thing, oh no, not that one, this one, is that right? Yeah. So this green line here is not a volume line. In fact, it's a it's a pitch shift, and um, oh, it's telling me I've frozen the track. Let me know. So a pitch shift. Uh, it's it's going up one fifth. Um, actually, this should be up a fifth and two cents. There you go. It's going up a fifth, and I'm fading it in and out. So one hundred here is completely a fifth, and then zero is is no pitch shift. So it's just as the sense of a sort of sky, sky edition. Um, Okay, so I'll show the auction in just one second. Just other things to bear in mind uh, for the beginning of this. Oh dear. Compute See, this is the thing about having this number of tracks, is you get an unhappy computer. Tinkle is always the one. It doesn't like Tinkle at all. Just a whole number of things. There's like tubular bells and glockenspiels and all sorts of things. That's actually all MIDI, and I did that all in advance, but there's also some real stuff later. Sort of a miscellaneous uh, scrot. Uh, this is a, a choir called Voces 8, who actually uh, provide some vocals on the first track of this album. Uh, and I, I put them in here because it's in the same key. And here we have uh, organs. <laughs> this is the tempo, one, 123. And uh, this organ here is doing fives. Two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And this one's doing sevens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, Good times. So combined, they just provide this sort of like nonsense. Blah, 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 blah. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, and then uh, let's just go down and see what else we've got. There's obviously plenty to to look at. Anything else down here? Oh yeah, some piano. So. Myriad of, uh, myriad of piano notes. It's uh, an ocean. There we go, an ocean. It's nice to breathe in some sort of like so that's why I use oceans. Oceans are good to be here, uh, to, to add air, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, let's see, there's a bit of Celeste over here. I'm just going to sort of finish going through my layers. I'm not going to go at this pace of the whole thing, otherwise we will be here forever. But um, this is the drums. Which is cool. Um, and yeah, it's in seven beats in a bar. It's not in there. It's like a trick because you think it's in one, two, three, four, five. One, two. But actually, it's in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which is kind of funny, and it, it adds to that sense of, I don't know. It kind of like it's like like you're, like you're constantly falling backwards, but you're also being driven forwards, um, kind of thing. Anyway, so the beginning is this sort of tumultuous waves and waves of stuff. This bass comes in at one point and it goes like. And if you have like a sub subwoofer in your bedroom or on your cell phone, then you will hear that that is like uh, rain because rain goes with oceans quite nicely. And uh, the, this is the sort of uh, the stomps and claps. I wanted to tell you a story about this. So last year I did a show in Manchester at a venue called The Band on the Wall. And uh, it was super fun. It was like, you know, one of the best shows of the tour, UK tour, December uh, December 2017, I think. Yeah. And uh, and after the show was over, I got the whole room uh, to essentially, um, well, half the room got their phones out and filmed, and the other half of the room did the stomping and clapping rhythm that I taught them, which is this thing. And if you, if you go into Twitter and type in hashtag JC Stomp Clap, You'll see all the videos that were posted. There were 24 videos. And I downloaded them all and put them into Logic. And then I compressed them, put a bunch of effects on them, and made it sound like really fat. And that is a course with a PH, not an F. 
And and the cool thing about those sounds is that it sounds like this. It's like big old like we will rock you kind of claps. And they permeate the entire album actually. Um, but this song, especially in the verse here, they really kind of like define that that groove. And it's just cool because it was a room of these awesome people in Manchester. By the way, I'm coming back to Manchester in uh, February. So see you there if you live in Manchester. Um, okay, voyaging into the verse. Let's just have a quick look at this percussion. So we've got a few different things going there. Drums, which is some toms are recorded. You can see each individual region is kind of sliced up because I'm very pedantic about my timing. And so, you know, in order for the groove to feel like it sits in the pocket, often I go and tidy up things after I've recorded them. And also sometimes I record things in a rush, so I need to go and tidy them up. Um, that's more of a tom. And then down here, we've got this snare drum. And that's all recorded uh, over, you can see this, it's like over there. This is the, that's the kit that I played. Okay. And then there's this thing here. All these kind of fills and these are fun because uh they're actually sped up by about i think they're like 120 percent speed so there's like this there's this sound it's a difference in sound it's like instead of duh, 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 it's like duh, 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 duh. so if you go duh, 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 instead of duh, 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 it'll go duh, 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 like that it's cool um so i like to do that also i can't quite play that fast so lucky i can do that in logic uh, and so that is a lot of stuff uh, my family did some claps uh, which is cool, and they'll see the, the JC stump claps are present. Bunch of clicks and crackle. Crackle's nice because it adds the sense of like fireside, you know what I'm saying? Fireside. And there's this thing called sidechain compression, which if you don't know what it is, you should know what it is. Um, it's really interesting. Basically, you have one sound, and then you have another sound, and you compress this sound through the dynamic range of this sound. So if you have compressed through, then it will go like that. And that's how a lot of pop music goes like So actually the crackle is side chained to these kicks. Which is, which is kind of fun. Um, and then there's some like timpani. And like you can't go wrong with timpani. It's like such a such a fundamental part of my music. I also forgot to say about uh, the, with the voices, I forgot to mention. So these guys here. These kind of, they flow into each other, create this kind of bed of sound, and then over the top of them, uh, I obviously sing the, the lead vocal part, which is up here. Uh, no wings to fly, no song to sing, no hand to hold. No and uh, alongside me, you may notice there's some female voices, and that's no uh, sing, my family. So it's uh, it's no my mum, Susie, no and my two sisters as no well. Um, no wind behind, no part before. And uh, no it's, it's nice because it's this kind of like whole great big hug you know whenever whenever my family record things for me which is sometimes they're all over the album in different different shapes and sizes but it makes me very happy because my family and also i can't sing like that so it's a nice thing to be able to have them involved um anyway let's uh let's keep it moving because i know you've got places to be and people to people to see um what's going on here Need somebody to move my feet someone to be my i want to explain i want to explain what's going on here so there's a ton of voices as i discussed before um, here's here's some of them. Need somebody who can move my feet. <laughs> Someone to make my heart beat. <laughs> and I don't want you talking to me soft and sweet. <laughs> she said I'll be the one to make you feel complete. <sighs> she said do you? Nice. So um, just some little quirks to explain if you're interested. Uh, these guys here. Move my feet. <laughs> this red uh, red fade out here means like f slow down. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, rather than fade out. And you have two options with Logic. You can fade out or slow down. So I always Need somebody slow to down my feet. if I want that snatch away feeling, which I did here. And uh, so there's just, there's tons and tons and tons of voices because this like multiple gang layer thing is, is the thing I'm a real fan of. And for this song, I wanted to like get my boots on and go there, you know, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I also did a bunch of ga like gang vocal uh, stuff. I wanted to show you, where's that? Yeah, here. So. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Uh-huh. Give it to me, up and down. This is like a bunch of me and mates and my mates in Los Angeles. Uh, there was one day where we like came together and I said, can you sing all this really weird stuff? And they said, all right, okay. 
so then so then we did and it's just a bunch of yeah like wiggle 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 and things like that um <gasps> and yeah! later on he gets gets into this as well so there's all, all sorts of things and they, they sing the melody and also just kind of like jammed you know what i'm saying it's jamming that ho 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 is actually steve Vai, the guitarist Steady. <laughs> I actually I know that before. That's pretty cool. Okay. Anyway, let's just uh, let's return to slightly earlier in the song, and I want to show you some of the orchestra as well because the orchestra obviously permeates this, for example. And this as well. And so you, you might be wondering, well, why only two tracks? Well, the answer to that is, of course, that there's a different session where the orchestra lives. And I'm going to show you this session. Uh, it's this one, I think. So don't close. See if we can run both sessions at the same time, shall we? Um, while this is loading, I did also just want to show you the uh, the Sibelius score. So Sibelius is a, is a musical notation app, and I spent lots of time in it this year. And this is what it looks like. This is what the score looks like when you kind of write it out on paper. Uh, and so just to play you an example. That's what you just heard. <laughs> it sounds stupendous. Empowering, I always find. Sibelius score is very empowering. So there's some harp there. All these, the, fi the fives and the sevens down here with, with the organs. Uh, all of that was, was in the end, it was done with orchestra, which is cool. All these sustained notes. Um, see how Logic's getting on, shall we? Oh, here it is. So this session is a different Logic session, and this has 268 tracks in it. This is the orchestra, and this ended up being about four tracks of the other session. Bonkers, eh? Uh, but let me just let me just show you some stuff. So... So uh, this, of course, is uh, is uh, Jules Buckley and the Metropole Orchestra. I didn't mention that, but I think you already knew that. Uh, the Metropole Orchestra is one of my favourite orchestras in the whole world. They are, they are just amazing, as you can hear for yourself. And Jules was just so integral to getting this off the page and into real life. Um, so here, for example, we have the strings. And the way we recorded the strings was we have room microphones, which are up here. So here's some deckers. And two other options, different parts of the room. And then there's a microphone on every single player and these are panned in different places and they th that panning corresponds to where they are sit uh, seated in the room so obviously for one for one pass or one take for one section you have a ton of tracks because the orchestra is just a ton of musicians i think it's about 60 60 musicians uh if it's a tutti track and obviously here we did section by section um but you can see here for example that's a string this is a different string dub this is the string line i think do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do Pretty cool. And that's the brass. And the way in which I composed this music was I made my original Logic session and I record all of the, all of these notes using MIDI and using contact sounds often oftentimes because contact sounds very realistic. Well, they're quite realistic. So for example, you'd have, I wonder if they're actually in this session. Uh, yeah, actually maybe you can hear it here. Let me see. Yeah, demo orc. There it is. So that's like all of the that's all of the instruments. Uh, but I recorded them here on my own in this room, and then we obviously went and recorded it, and it sounds like this, which is a lot better than when I played it on the keyboard. Close mics on the winds. All sorts of stuff. So, so tons of wondrous things to play with. All of the percussion as well that we did was really fun. Uh, oh, it's muted right now. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I just wanted to show you the sort of the nature of that. Uh, and then later on, oh dear, how are we getting around? 
Later on, when it gets to the kind of like, if I tell you, then this stuff happens. All these stabs. Which is cool. I went and sort of cut those up with scissors and made them really short and, and stabby and put some weird effects on them to make them sound like they're not real. But in fact, they are real. Anyway, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna not save this session, and this is gonna take about one minute twenty seconds to reload. So while this is reloading, I'm gonna take some questions. Uh, let me see if I can go onto the right mode. Hey, there you go. Cool. So, so friends of mine, give me some. Um, Give me some questions. Don't, don't be too far, because I won't be able to read them all, but um, but let's see. Okay. Oh yeah, I can see that you guys are saying that I'm streaming in mono. And it's true, I am uh, streaming in mono. It's because this microphone here is the only microphone that I have available. This is my vocal mic. And almost all these tracks were recorded sort of sitting in this actual chair, the blue chair um, of joy. And uh, and this is the microphone I've done all the vocals in, but, but unfortunately, a PCI card in my system has failed and so as Ben Bloomberg has helpfully informed me this is the only way to get the stream working so that's why today you are stereoless you're mono hey but that's all good right okay so let's see how do you start a tune like this um it's a really good question I can show you a little plan um here I just I just dug this up by mistake while I was waiting for you guys to arrive um this is like a little bit of a plan for, for the song. And there are a few different grooves. I had like a ton of grooves uh, that I've been working on across the albums. Oh, that's Logic saying, oh no, it's done already. Uh, yeah, I had a ton of grooves and I wanted to find the right ones that went in the right orders to get this kind of like whirlwind piece to work. Because essentially, as you may have kind of gleaned, this song is a bunch of themes from the album kind of all put together. And there'll be lots of different parts of this that you'll hear throughout the album. It's very exciting. Um, as, as you see, I've written down here, just a few good sections is all you need. It's absolutely true. Um, and so this is like, this is Jacob language, for example. Um, some of these I've used, some of these I haven't used. Uh, like Urdu, for example, didn't use that idea. But Stomp Stomp Clap, I did use. Timpanis Cascade, I used that. Prince Chords 1999, why not? Petrushka, the piece by Stravinsky. Leanne Le Havas um, is a friend of mine. And uh, all sorts, of, all sorts of other things. So there's, there's a ton of ideas. I do a lot of this on, on planes. So I'll sit on a plane and I'll think, well, how can I make a collage that makes some kind of sense? Um, and the sort of like doom, 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 was a groove that was actually originally part of a different song. I didn't end up using that song because it didn't feel right. But the groove itself I really liked, and I wanted to use it for something. Um, and uh, yeah, that groove is actually inspired. Oh man, let me see if I can find it. Uh, it's my iPhone 6s device. Um, let me see if I can find this somewhere. I think it might take a while for me to find it. It's a voice memo. I do so many voice memos, it's been it's been buried right underneath uh, all of this stuff. Uh, I'm not sure I can find it. But anyway, I, I was at a Snucky Puppy gig and they, and they went into this groove in F sharp and it was like <laughs> and I was just like, whoa, that's super cool. And I went home and and sort of recreated it from memory. Oh, here it is. Super cool. Super funky. And so anyway, I was, I was, I was sitting in with them at that show, it's at the House of Blues of Boston, and I just happened to hear it, and I was just like, that's the missing ingredient I've been waiting for, because I'd had the verse planned, I had the beginning planned, and I had the ending planned, so then I went home and made that groove, which is called the hip groove, which I'll get to later. Um, and uh, and so that's kind of how it all came together. But there's, there's just tons of sort of concentration you have to put into making sure that all the ingredients flow and that all the transitions are right and things like that. Um, I, I've regained my logic session, so I'm actually going to move on and answer some of your questions again later on. But uh, let me see. So... Is this gonna play? No song to sing me, no yeah. air to hold me, no star to guide me, no breeze to blow me, no tears to cry me, no fire to burn me, no sea to sail me, no sky above me, no hell below me, no wind behind me. No All right, let's stop here and take some take take a re take a recce. That's actually me, but um, I recorded that at uh, at a slower speed and then sped it up so it sounds like a, a lady. It's so funky. Keep it fucking up. 
I don't know if you guys heard that, but it's one of my favorite bits of the whole song. Uh, so this is just some electric bass here. Some keys as well. Cool. Some guitar. Just all sorts of different things. Storm. There you go. You can't do without a storm. Uh, and so all of that electric guitar was, was this electric guitar up there, and the bass was that bass as well. Um, and let me see, anything else to, to speak of? This is my kind of like hilarious trap uh, trap impression. This is real trap, this is like real tra trap music. Um, so all sorts of like bass and, and different kick, there's three different kicks here. Ooh. And they're all compressed together in this bus, which is called Beast of a Kick. And the bus has R bass and Sheps and Limiter and Compressor. Um, oh shoot, <laughs> sorry, I'm really sorry. My goodness, logic is logic is returned. <laughs> You've just been looking at my face this whole time. Okay, so just to make sure it is actually returned. Okay, nice. My bad. Uh, kick drums, trap groove. Oh, actually, this is something else. Little like bits and blobs and blips and blip. This is just the hats and, and this here and this here. Has this cool kind of tail reverb it's like a reverse reverb which is kind of nice um, and uh, let's see anything else finger snap very cool and something else i wanted to show you was was this thing i did we're all up with back to the obsession this thing here no wings to fly, no song to sing, no hand to hold, no star to guide, so, no breeze to blow me, no tears to cry, no fire to burn, no sea to sail me, no sky to Really like mangled vocals, and uh, these, these, these are mangled through a plugin called Little Alter Boy, which changes uh, formant, irrespective of pitch. And formant is you, it's like that thing, and the pitch is this thing. And um, no wings to fly, so this has a higher formant than pitch. And it's also treating the group as a whole, so it kind of mangles it as one sound. No um, to fly. I nicked this from a Chance the Rapper. Ah. I really like it when he does that. No breeze to blow me. No tick that. No tear to poke. No tears to cry. No fire to burn. No sea to sail me. No sky above me. No help and then below Obviously, me. you've got all these guys. No breeze to blow me. No tears to cry. No fire to burn. Which is no like 16 tracks of the same thing underneath. No wings to fly me. No song to sing me. No head to hold Harmony me. Harmony vocals. Backing vocals. No breeze to more down here, no actually. No wings to fly. No song to sing. No head to hold And you can't hear because I'm in mono, but those are actually panned hard, which means they're hard to the left and hard to the right. No wings so, uh, to fly. No song to sing. Really no spreads out. So this section needs to feel like it's gradually opening. So that's what I've been doing is gradually opening the, the stereo image. Um, just so you know. Uh, let me see if there's anything else to to let you know about, I mean, there's all this stuff, obviously, but we haven't got a ton of time. And obviously each one of these ingredients has its own volume. Um, and so it's very important that they're all automated, things uh, sort of like rising and falling, subtle changes, like this, cross phase, all this, this kind of stuff is the kind of like admin work of, of making albums, you know? Um, anyway. So, bass here, it's real bass and uh, midi bass at the same time, good snare there, and then uh, this is more drums, <laughs> tambourine, blips and blobs, beatboxing, and then anyway, we, we kind of like launch into this great big Next section, uh, there's this thing called, what's this piano here? Oh, where is it? Yeah, Dream Climb. Yeah, I made this in a, a plugin called uh, Break Tweaker. Don't know if you guys know Break Tweaker. Thanks for sticking around for this, by the way. I know this is a bit tenuous, but um, uh, it's like a crazy, uh, crazy throbbing sub to gain tension. This is a fuck blast. Indeed it is. And that kind of like, it's like a great big reshuffle that me means the section has to change. Uh, all sorts of other things. Anyway, and then we go into this other groove, which happens to be at three fifths of the tempo of the, of the original song. So the, the song is at 123 BPM, as you can see up here. Um, and 
the uh, yeah, and this section I can't remember what it is. I can't remember what it is. You, you guys, you guys will know uh, what tempo this is. I can do it on a calculator. Except that now my computer's going to do a spinny wheel. No worries. Um, anyway, so so this next section, uh, if you actually tap your foot through the whole thing, it, you'll come out the other side, and the tempo is equivalent. And I didn't actually change the metronome. But let me say one twenty three over five times three. 73.8, that's what I thought, 73.8. Um, but the metronome actually just keeps going. At this tempo. Chaos, absolute chaos. Um, but anyway, it's it's cool because um, there's a kind of strange relationship with this between the two tempos that means that it's possible to emotionally gauge your way from one to the other. It's not a random tempo, it's very, very well considered. But with the love um, of my heart, somehow I found you. Oh. And now we get into these oh. kind of like funky vocals. Oh. 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 Get it. Oh. And the crowd. Oh. Yeah. Good fun. And uh, got some kicks, some great big kicks. The amount of time I spent in this room just like plodding around and getting so amped up at this groove is many hours. <laughs> um, I, was, I was very excited about it. So this is the bass here. And you can uh, you can hit you can see the bass line all written down here in a, in MIDI. This is piano roll, and I, I played it on this keyboard down here um, and so that so that's fine and then yeah this groove the hip groove there's a whole mixture of different things let me just let me bring up this hip groove session I hope this is gonna load fast might, might spin roll me but essentially there's a few different ingredients going on here um, and it has this kind of lilt thing to it you know how some grooves are like dum, dum, cha, dum, 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 cha. but this groove is like dum, dum, cha, dum, dum, dum. anyway there, so there's a bunch of kind of like Singly, it's like these guys doing this in, in slop, kind of sloppy mechanism. This I think is in it as well. Bunch of sludge. Got a box of sludge to my right. Um, tambourines are doing this kind of thing. Oh, I can show you this in real life now. Okay, so sleigh bells. Spoons. So spoons is this. Box of spoons there. And it's like, I always tend to use it as a sort of alternative hi-hat because it's, it's such a good vibe to have like you know, things jangling and stuff. So I tend to do that. Um, there's this uh, sex bus down here, which is just like, just noises, breathing. Keep momentum going. Uh, let me see. There's kicks. Snare, swoop. A sort of collapsible snare. That's what it's called. Collapsible snare. I keep that in my pocket every now and then to bring it out. Crackle, and it's crackle with a lot of high end shown. You see how I've cut the low end out of that. Um, very nice. Crystallized claps. Kind of like sounds like when you're on a train and you'll begin to jangle on the rails, like it's a bit like that. Because after all, um, something. Uh, so that's the way it all fits together. Good old drum kit, obviously. So, so that is uh, that's the hip groove. I'm not going to save my changes. I'm going to return to this session. It's going to take about one minute twenty seconds to reload. So I'm going to answer another question uh, before we head to the end of the of the session. Um, give it to me. Okay, some questions. I might have to wait like twenty seconds because I know there's a little bit of a delay over here. Um, but let me see. Okay, while I wait for the questions to come in. I just saw the, the, the latest, the very latest cut of the video for this song. Um, and I couldn't believe my eyes. It's so insane. Uh, I think you're gonna really like it. It's, it's, um, it's, it's like, I think it's the most crazy thing I've ever seen. Um, but it, help, it really helps tell the story. Because this song is a story. It's not just a crazy jumble of sections. It's, it's, it's a real story, um, sort of lyrically as well. Because it's all about beginning this, this world of adventure, which, un, which will unfold over the next few months or so with, with Jesse. Um, and so it's about finding that kind of that sense of that sense of battle and courage and joy and and searching and openness and youth and kind of dawn of the whole thing. Because yeah, this 
this is quite in the beginning of the first album, which is all about kind of like winter becomes the spring. So it's all about like new growth. And so the video kind of shows parts of that as well. It's really exciting. I'm really excited for you to see it. Um, and uh, so that's cool. Okay, let me see if there's some questions coming. Um, let me see. Um, oh, blimey, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on down here. I'm just trying to find the best, uh, find the best one to choose. Let me see. I mean, yeah, here's one. Here's one. What advice? What advice would you give to someone who wants to make music in their rooms, like you did on your first album? Well, uh, first of all, I say that you should never ever feel any reason to be anybody other than yourself in your creative space, and I think that. It's something that you should be celebrating and discovering and uncovering. So for me, every time I make something, it's like I'm uncovering things about myself or about the process. Um, there's a sort of ancient philosophy in Japanese art, funnily enough, funny you should ask, um, that uh, that it kind of revolves around the idea of, of um, creating something being a, a yin process rather than a yang process. So yin is about inwards and yang is about outwards in a very, very kind of crude sense. Uh, yin is is the shadows and, and yang is, is the light and so in, in ancient times uh, people used to write things on rock for example using sculpture so they'd, they'd carve things out of rock and that would create shadows on the rock and the shadows would define the form and so their philosophy is that the, the meaning is what is behind the thing and your job as a creator is to remove sort of parts of, of the exterior to reveal what's within which is a really nice idea and so so that's I think one of the reasons why in western books for example in, in literature we often write in black ink on white paper but in the western world we've we've begun to feel like the black is on is, is on the foreground of the white and the white is just the background but actually the way the Japan the Japanese uh the, the, this particular sort of vein of, of Japanese philosophy would operate and look at that would be that the, the white is actually the form and the black is just what's behind it which is why it's black, which is a lack of light, and white is light. And anyway, that's quite a tenuous way of, of sort of saying that I think that rather than thinking that you've got a great big mound of things to build from scratch, you already know so much about, about music probably and about yourself and about humanity. Even if you don't know much about music, you, you know instinctively about music a lot. You, you, you know, for example, you, you know what you like and, and, you, and you know what you don't like without even trying. So for me, I think as a creative person, once you've sort of established that it's possible, it's a hair in my mouth, to be yourself um, and that that's a positive thing and that it won't be necessarily easy all the time but it's exciting to uncover things um, it, it's just a matter of uncovering it's like you you generate things you create things you create things you, you try to create things without thinking too much and then once you start thinking it's a matter of thinking well what can I lose to reveal what I'm trying to say here you know you, you lay all of the materials out and then it's a matter of siphoning through and thinking okay this is what has meaning this is what has meaning and now how can these join together? How can these be married? Or if this is a melody that's in my head right now, how can another melody support it harmonically? Or how can a groove support it rhythmically? And so all these different musical ingredients kind of join together. And for me, it's just a matter of thinking, well, how can I, yeah, how can I uncover what's going on? And so I, I did a ton of experimenting. I think the best way to learn is just by just by doing it. It's just by experimenting. Um, and so, yeah, my, my sense of practice has revolved around this sc screen. Um, <laughs> Well, not this exact monitor screen, uh, which is quite new, but th this room and this space and, and the idea of creating as much as I possibly can by throwing things onto onto pages and onto paper, sort of virtual pages, and, and then beginning to uncover and, and engage meaning from that. So I think that really the, the best thing to do is to do as much as you can creatively without judging it for as long as you can without judging it, as, as children do. You know, it, it's not about knowing whether it's right or not. It's about making a judgment that it's good or bad. That's, for me, very unhelpful. So it's good to think, well, this is a thing. And how can I work with it? And and for me, that's quite freeing. And so when it's when it's a matter of putting together, say, an album, it's just a matter of, first of all, gathering all of your raw materials, not judging them, and then beginning to work with them, rather than sitting down and thinking, well, what can I include? What can I exclude? What parts of myself do I like? What parts of myself do I not like? It's like, this is myself. Now let's work with it. And I think for me, that's how creating feels. That's what I'd encourage you to think. It, it's, it's in those terms that I would encourage you to think. But there's no right way for anybody. That's just how I... I've tended to attach myself to that process and it's why I love it because I learned so much about myself through creating music because it's like it all comes down to my decisions and observing the decisions I make helps me learn about myself and that's really cool it's a long answer to a short question um, logic has returned I'm gonna be right back with the questions at the end of the thingy but just to show you where the hip groove has ended up it sounds like this very nice 
nice. And then there's this. It's just like one of the most like manly moments of my life, just playing this groove on the drums. Just over there. It was in the middle of the night, probably 4 a.m. My family were trying to get to sleep. And they didn't get to sleep. So that goes on the loop, which is really cool. And then there's this kind of brass hit. And there's a sound in, a, in Massive. I don't know if you guys know about Massive. Uh, and Massive is this. <laughs> it generates sound. And uh, there's a sound called Picciarella. And Picciarella um, is... Oh, so you've got the Sibelius sound and this one that well. And it does that kind of thing. So that's cool. Um, and I, I played these hits in Picciarella. And then I joined them with, with the real brass. Uh, let me see whether I can find the real, real brass. I think they're up here somewhere. Yeah, here they are. There you go. I did a lot of the thing on these guys. Pretty cool. And so it all joins together to create this great big bonk. Party. Um, oh, my bad. So tons of stuff going on there. Um, that essentially is that section. It just gets kind of crazier and crazier. Uh, what's this here? Oh, that's some extra bass, trillion. It's a bass sound, which joins together with this guy. Basso Pizza. Yeah. And then, yeah, we've got drums we've already talked about. Um, th there's one sound which I, I think is quite important to this entire song. And that is uh, the heartbeat sample that I found. Now the question is where did I leave that? <laughs> because there's, there's lots of lots of tracks here. I think it's around the middle. I've had to, I've had to sort of had to find ways of, of memorizing these sessions visually. Oh here it is. Yeah. Bang in the middle. Okay, so heartbeat sounds like this. Need somebody understand my soul. <laughs> and that yeah that lyric um what's the lyric with the heart in it? Someone, someone make my heartbeat. Oof, oof. Anyway, so just so the heartbeat actually acts as a massive kick drum in, in this song. Uh, and I bo I boosted the gain a lot because it's real loud. And then in Neutron, um, there's some EQ on here as well to shape it. Um, EQ is what shapes a sound like uh, spectrally. Uh, it's, it's a long story. Okay. Anyway, so the, the Beast Smash Funk section has come to an end, and it's like, we're crazy. <laughs> we're back to the OG, the orchestral glow section. And when I first played this to my mum, she, well, actually quite recently I played this to my mum, and she said, these two sections don't go together. Um, and she said, you need, you need some way to, to gain, like, gain air and, and push into the next section. So I added this gong, these two gongs. Like that, which kind of acts as this bridge. It's like a bridge over the two sections, so that your energy subconsciously is carried throughout this tumbling thing, you know, into back into back into the orchestra. And obviously, the the, uh, the folk line comes back. Parts of the introduction, orchestra comes back. Voices with some reverb. Great big, glorious chord. It's like, oh, we're nearly the end, because you think it's the end, right? Uh, I bet every one of you thought it was the end when the gong happened. Am I right? So this is the gong. It has a ton of reverb on it, because actually it's in a room. I'm guessing it's... Actually, no, it's not. Okay, I, I take that back. I wasn't using Autoverb for that track. It's just a gong that I slowed down a lot. And then here's, here's a bunch of tracks that I also slowed down. This is Thunderstorm. Uh, extended crowd ovation. I don't. Know, I don't know how these sounds ended up, ended up on my computer, but I ended up with like a film score library of sounds. And so, th the way that I did this um, is I, I took the sound like a gong, and then I cut it in half, and then I slowed down the second half, and then I took the half of that and slowed down the second half of that, and I took half of that and slowed down the second half of that. And what you get is this, um, yeah, is this kind of like ever lengthening kind of thing. 
Um, so you start with the real sound and gradually you lose. And you all, I'm also doing this slow down thing. So it's like this kind of metallic, it's like almost like a metallic sound. Um, and that comes from the snare drum. Which, yeah, it's just like po every possible facet of this audio file has been slowed down so it just sounds like this weird kind of like distressed mixture of metal glump, you know, kind of like a shipyard that's been sunk underwater or something. Um, and then, yeah, this is just kind of like thunderstorm and crowd, both mono. And, uh, yeah, a little bird comes in actually here. And then the bird is the bird sort of is collapsed. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that, but yeah, it is. And so then everything kind of goes to sleep, and it's like, whoa, was that all a dream? And then and then then comes keep in motion, which is a very simple, um, keep in a very simple section. And it's this constant D that goes throughout. Um, stay, then, stay, stay. This is the lead vocal, which is actually done it in one take, which is quite nice. The whole thing was one take. Um, I'm broken. And uh, sorry, I just changed the link to one of those tracks by accident. And then, uh, these are these are the, the different responses. Uh, and just to it, just to explain that, um, so it was like it was like keep in motion, me in my room, keep in motion. And then it was like keep in motion, but the door has two little black microphones off it, which are room mics. And then the drums overheads, keep in motion. So it was me singing keep in motion, but on different microphones, which is why it sounds like different, kind of different groups of people or like they're different distances away. Um, and uh, so that was a, that was fun. Sorry, let me put this back, there you go. And, um, and so yeah, that's what we got here. We got, we got overheads and drum. Oh no, sorry, there's actually close mics here. So the drums are here. Yeah, drum overheads, D-O, and overheads, O-H, -O -O good stuff. Um, it's harmony. And then it's just, just, just a support. And then there's all sorts of actual, there's like all sorts of skull dog going on underneath the surface here. Um, there's actually a dolphin at one point. <laughs> the dolphin comes in, let me see if I can find him. Dolphins. It's really, really, really quiet. It's, it's here. It's just here. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Dolphin song. There's something unbelievably haunting about dolphin song. Luckily, there was someone on my computer. Just searched for dolphins, and out, up came the thing. And then this is like a really. I bet you can't hear that because you're probably listening on your phone, but there's like an unbelievably low sign, sign note. I'll just show you my, um, my uh, speaker there, see how it's rattling? Yeah, that is how low that note is. Um, I'm getting good at this. And then there's rain, just to, because you, you need to ease the palette after all this, it's just like, let's sweeten. Um, something, you know, after all this change, you need something constant. And then there's uh, all this piano down here. So, you know, it's nice Cli climbing up this, this super old hyper mega melitian fifths thing and then down in fifths. See that? Um, so it's just kind of like wakening and then like brightening and then darkening, wakening and then sleepening. Um, and essentially, that is that's kind of it. There's there's you know, all sorts of uh, all sorts of little ingredients towards the end, but basically speaking, that is the session. Um, so yeah, in total, about seven hundred and twenty tracks, which is cra <laughs> just crazy. Um, and I'm thinking about potentially uh, sort of at one point printing out these in great big frames and signing them, so that maybe you guys can one day have one. That would be really nice. So I'll keep you posted about that because it, <laughs> it's quite a big object, and it'd be quite fun to sort of have it not on this screen. Like my, my monitor screen is, let me, let me see if I can show you. Um, so it's a bit rickety trying to show you this camera. 
but this is my monitor screen and so I have to scroll down to see all the tracks um, so I'm, I've, I've just got very used to kind of scrolling up and down all the time um, but such is uh, such is the way of things story of my life that's all I'm gonna say anyway let me see uh, I'm back okay that's good so um, it, I think it's time for some questions I know I've already been here for 50 minutes which is quite quite nice but I'm gonna just uh, answer a few questions real fast and then I'm going to leave you to your days. Um, so let me see if I can check some out. Okay. Bread. Amun says bread. Thank you for bread. Uh, what? What's bread? I don't understand what you mean. Um, okay. Let me see. Oh, needs more bread. Bread alert. Yeah, I think this is a joke I don't understand. I'm sorry, you guys. Okay, I'm just going to take a couple of questions. I'm going to take three questions in total. Um, let me see. Um, hmm. How funky do you like it, Jacob? Yuri is asking. How funky do I like it, Jacob? Um, funky. Uh, let me see. What was different about working with an orchestra? Well... Uh, it's different because usually I play the instruments myself but this time I, I was composing for a, a large group of people um, to play and it's it's a different process because uh, because that's 60 human beings you're bringing into a room and, and you want to give them something to to do that, that they can do um, and I wanted to sort of to harness the power of, of, of the Metropolitan Orchestra which is so immense and I've, I've been a real fan of their music for such a long time and I've, I've become friends with them the last couple of years doing doing some gigs with them and I wanted to embrace them as a force and yeah, Jules and I sort of sat down and we kind of planned what this project was going to be and I said oh well there's, there's a ton of different musical styles and genres that I'm going to be straddling uh, across the four albums but the first one is is, is just or orchestral stuff and he was kind of like oh that's great we should be able to you know just play, play you know play through the charts and that should be fine but actually the process was was crazy you know crazy complicated because everyone had to wear ears uh, for, for most of these songs because some of them really chop and change um, and so have clicks going except for there's one really nice long ballad where it's quite simple so they just they played that one as it was um, but yeah I, I also I, I couldn't have done this without uh, Ben Bloomberg my dear friend who was there helping to engineer the session so he kind of put the microphones up in, in the rooms uh, so to speak and and make sure everything was was, was recording well um, and so that was a really amazing process and I guess after the fact we came but we came back and Ben and I have been running both these. Uh, ben and I have been running all all of these album sessions over Dropbox. Kudos to Dropbox, which is insane. Um, but Ben has been able to open up the sessions, spatialize the orchestra, make the orchestra sound really good, clean up all the you know, creaks and squeaks, and then he's you know he's been able to zoom in on different tracks and make them sound real good, like vocal tracks and stuff like that. And then I've just been able to open the sessions, and it's all been where I've left it. That's really amazing. So I really thank Dropbox immensely for that. Um, but it, it's just like rather than one person making the music it's like 70 people making the music but it's the same it's the same old imagination of mine i guess just because i you know all of these notes are are where i plan for them to be but what you can't plan for is the energy that the orchestra brings which is so immense and i really felt that at the bbc proms uh which is such a crazy concert um because the orchestra and myself were live on stage playing lots of this music from the first album so that was crazy okay next question um let me see, where do you plan to go on tour, is a, is a quick question. Uh, all of the tour dates are on my website, um, that's for February and March. And um, you can come see me, that's kind of like kind of like a, across Europe in part, and then some in the States, and then over the course of the, the coming year I'll be playing in even more places around the world. Uh, we'll be back in uh, back in South America, and back in Australia, and, and back in Italy, all these different uh, parts of the world, uh, and plus many more, Asia for example. So just stay tuned. Um, uh, let's see, are you still working on tracks for the album or is it already? Uh, I haven't yet finished uh, the albums. In fact, my job for the next three hours is to completely and finish the first album, which is that some songs aren't yet finished. So I've got three hours until I have to submit the, the masters, like proper masters to the mastering engineer, which is which is pretty cool. Um, there's one question, how are you sonically fitting all these sounds and frequencies together? Um, and what that means is kind of like, I guess, the high and the low uh, of all these different sounds. How do, how do those not sound muddy when... When joined together um, and it's a real it's a, it's a real challenge but I have to say that Ben has been huge for that uh, Ben's taught me a lot about the way in which logic works and sound works and one thing you can do with sound uh, in this amazing plugin called uh, called ozone is uh, you can 
you can place it in a, in, a, in a spectral sense. And let me just really quickly show you what that means because it's been a, a huge thing for me. So say I want to add, yeah, this looks like there's already an ozone instance within this track. So this is ozone. And there's a thing called um, imager here, which has four different frequency bands. And so if I play something through this track, he said, I need somebody understands my soul. And activate the plugin. He said, I need somebody understands my soul. That's that's the stereo image. You're saying that's how much of the of the left and right speaker you're hearing. And these lines here, as far as I understand it, that is like the edge of the frame. And you can actually go even further here um, by limiting the amount of, of sounds in, in, in the middle of the stereo. So if you take out some stuff in the middle, it will make it feel even wider. And so if I just loop that for one second, I need some obviously I'm broadcasting in mono, so this will make no no uh, sonic difference to you whatsoever, but I'm need playing here. Somebody understands my soul. And so <coughs> some need somebody band understands four my soul. here is the very, very top of, of the track. It's it's this frequency band up here, so like 10K up. I need and I can put that really wide. I need somebody understands my soul. Or really narrow. Some and I can put this one wide or really narrow. I can put this one really wide. So there's all different frequency some bands. And one, so that's completely mono, which is how you're hearing some this. Somebody understands my soul. But something with the orchestra that's really cool sometimes to do is to have different elements of the orchestra be spatialized slightly differently from each other. Um, so you have, for example, the strings, you have the sound here, and then the high end goes, and the middle end goes, and then the woodwind is the opposite. The high end goes, and the middle end goes, is that right? The same, or whatever, the opposite. And so when you're listening, can really help spread things out like that a sense of distance can be achieved um because obviously if you play 720 tracks in like in mono on top of one another you will die which would be really sad because i like you uh so it's important to, to space things out and i i always thought that like left and right was the limit but actually there's even more distance you can cover and that's before you even get into like binaurals and all sorts of other things like surround sound so that's all good one more question and then i'm going to go and finish this album i really need to go and finish that and have some food as well um let me see um, one more question okay what well, okay one, one more one more question it, 21 against 22 everyone's been asking me for me to do this I'm gonna see if I can pull this off the, the 21 against 2 I did, video I did on the Northern Line train at one time was like a one take wonder um, but if I put the, mic, the camera down here you should be able to see this let me see if I can pull this off you ready I think that was it ladies and gentlemen that concludes our uh, logic session and um it's been so nice to have you here uh it's it's great to see you once once again um i'm really really excited for you to see the video for this song uh, it should be out in about a week's time so stay tuned um just all those finishing touches right now it's uh, it's nuts absolutely bonkers just insane absolutely wild uh so that's really good thanks for thanks for diving into my imagination with me um this has been the story of my life for the entire of this year and so it's nice to kind of unpack the kind of box of stars that you see here. Um, anyway, um, I hope you're having a lovely day where you are in the world, whatever time it is in the world. It's now approaching 8 p.m. here in London. Uh, I will see you all on tour next year. And uh, there's just one other thing I wanted to mention, which is that uh, patreon.com is, is, a, is a website where uh, traditionally for the In My Room videos, people were able to upload, not upload, uh, like tip me essentially for things that I do like this and uh, songs and videos and uh, live streams all sorts of things for, for this next album um, I've kind of completely simplified patreon.com and it's now just a place where you can join like my family club kind of thing and if you pledge five dollars a month then every month I will do a live stream a bit like this but I'll be playing some songs on the piano and guitar and answering some questions it's like a little family uh, vibe and it, it'll be cool to have you there and obviously every Every cent, every penny of that money goes directly into Jesse and making Jesse more spectacular. Um, and it, it works in, a, in, a, in a, a kind of monthly way. So if you want to tip me like five bucks a month, feel free. If you, do, if you don't want to tip me, that's absolutely fine. I promise you. But if, if you do want to tip me five dollars or more, then that is just so lovely. And I will, I will see you there on those monthly live streams. Um, but until then, and uh, until the album comes out, which is on December 7th, by the way, December 7th is... Jesse Volume 1 of 4. There are four albums coming out in, a few, in, in the space of a few months' time. It's been crazy. But December 7th is Jesse Volume 1. Stay tuned for that. The video comes out about this time next week, I should hope. Um, and then two more songs from Jesse Volume 1 drop in a couple of weeks' time. So stay tuned for that. Uh, 
yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, thanks, to, thanks again for joining me on this lovely day. I mm. actually still have the pumpkin from the, uh, the Jesse launch, which is st still a good friend of mine. So we're going to go and uh, have some supper together. But catch you later. Be good and be yourself. And uh, see you very soon. Okie dokie. See ya. <laughs>